Uh, do we do we have the music or not? And now with another tale from the crib. Come to my house, I have a room. Here's Michael K. Hi, right, forty-five years ago today, uh, in Richfield, um, uh, Ohio, at the Richfield Coliseum, it was the tale today by uh, uh, Mike Picaro in the Post. Chuck Wepner fought uh, Muhammad Ali, and lasted, I, I think. Almost the entire way, 18 seconds. They, they stopped the fight 18 seconds before the end of the uh, the end of the 15th round. Well, sitting and watching it on closed circuit in an LA theater was Sylvester Stallone, and that was the germination of Rocky. That's where he started to think about the underdog Rocky facing Apollo Creed. Mm. Well, anyway, that was a problem because Chuck Wepner really. You know, although Stallone said that that was the inspiration for the Rocky series, there was no money for Chuck Wepner. So they had some legal battles, whatever the case may be. Now we fast forward to, I, I believe it was like 2015, I'd say, and uh, Sylvester Stallone was on center stage. It might even have been earlier. And um, so Stallone's talking, and then back in the early, early days of center stage, we, uh, we used to have the audience have a segment where they'd ask questions. So they're getting the microphone ready for the audience members. Usually five people ask questions from the audience. And the people line up. And this is during a break. And Stallone looks up, and the third person on line is Chuck Wepner. And Stallone gets, loses all color in his face. And he looked at me, he goes, you guys set me up? You put, you, you, you put this guy here just to do this? I said, no. He goes, well, how did he get in? I said, well, anybody could get in. I said, you just go on the Internet when we offer tickets and you click. I said, he got it on his own. I had no idea he was going to be here. He goes, this guy could be trouble. I said, yeah. He goes, yeah. He goes, uh, I mean, do you have my back? <laughs> I said, do I have your back? You're Rocky. No, I don't have your back. And... He looked like he was going to pass out. And then Wepner asked a question. He was a gentleman. And then they ended up settling, and I guess he gave Wepner enough money to stop Wepner from, you know, tracking him down. This was a couple of years later, but that's my tales from the crib for the day. That is an amazing compliment that he thought you could have had his back. Plus, he was and talking you know verbally. Me, I couldn't have. Then you wouldn't have. Uh, I, I mean, I guess I would have tried to hold Chuck back, but Chuck probably could have killed so much so long, let alone me. God, that would have been something. What a so you didn't call attention to it during the show? No, no, no. I didn't even notice it until, like, they started lining people up. I didn't notice that uh, that Chuck Wepner was in the audience. Now, what was Chuck's all of a question? Sudden, I, it was something innocuous. It wasn't like, why didn't you pay me money? It, you know, I think he was just there to rattle Sylvester's cage, and he, he rattled it. Now, did they have a graphic for it? Were people watching that center stage aware that that was Chuck Webner? I th they didn't have a graphic. I think he said, "Hi, I'm Chuck Webner," and then okay. like Stallone said, "Hey, Chuck," something like that. But uh, yeah, Stallone was a great guy, but that he was really unnerved. Wow! But I don't think Chuck Webner would have like charged the stage if you know what I mean. That did, that wouldn't have made any sense. But he did have a legitimate beef that hey, me almost going to distance with Muhammad Ali kind of it didn't kind of it was the it, the inspiration for rocky uh, and you admitted it don't i get some money and I, they eventually settled out of court but that that that's a great question does he deserve money because he was the inspiration to a movie i mean a lot of things can inspire you does that mean that you deserve like credit and and I deserve mean, a financial reward for it right peter i mean it, it's I, not I, his story right it's, it's not, not his not, story he's just the inspiration so, I don't know. I don't know. You know what you do in a situation like that? You would hope that you've at least reached out in some way and done something with him. Well, he, you know what Stallone did that was wrong was admit that it was the inspiration. He did it on all the interviews after Rocky. You know, the Chuck Wepner was the inspiration. So, I mean, Rocky was technically Chuck Wepner. You know, kind of a, a, a hard-nosed fighter, didn't have much, you know, didn't have style. He was just a brawler. Don't say it. If he never said it, Chuck Wepner would have never, yeah. ever had a claim to it. But Stallone admitted it. 
Do you know, by the way, I never did I mention to you guys that I sat near Jerry Cooney at, at the fight in Vegas? Yeah. No, he's a gentleman, isn't he? Oh, oh my God. What a tremendous guy. Yeah. Like he he watching him interact with the boxing media in general, he just acts like he's part of the boxing media. Like he doesn't he has no air about him that he's a boxing legend himself. He's just the nicest dude. No, he's a really nice guy. And, and, you know, if you look back at his fight with Holmes, which was, you know, he was he was portrayed as a great white hope, which was unfair. He, he Larry Holmes was a great fighter, and he actually he actually was competitive against him. It wasn't he like was. he was a palooka. He actually actually had a pretty good fight. No, he's a great guy. I see him at the Garden a lot at Ranger Games. He's just a, you know, f- phenomenal local guy with a tremendous story uh, himself. So Peter's got his own segment, Michael.